I think also a, a shift in my thinking at that point was that when we think about development, when we think about impact, mm -hmm. again, this ongoing kind of internal dialogue around mm. development, justice, dignity, what do all those pieces mm. mean? Mm. I think a real recognition that aid as we know it mm. is often not the answer. Yeah. And it shouldn't be, but it, it's given as an answer. Mm. Mm. But it can be... A, a disabler. Yes, yeah, yeah. and mm. hugely ineffective. Mm. Mm. <laughs> and recognizing the difference between that and kind of community rooted, community driven mm. solutions mm. Um, and the injustice of often the aid world mm. versus the mm. justice of kind of that community rooted space. Mm. And, and how do I, as mm. essentially an international development practitioner, mm. Mm. navigate my way mm. um, between those two worlds? And, mm. and I remember thinking, um, you need to be part of this aid world mm -hmm. to be successful, to raise the funds, to mm. be in the right conversations, the right networks. Mm -hmm. But how do you disrupt that space without ending your own <laughs> career? Mm -hmm. <laughs> disrupt that space in a way that allows this kind of community yeah. rooted mm. Um, mm. work to thrive because mm. that's where the impact is, sadly. <laughs> and finding your nexus, being at the sweet spot between mm. both is, is mm. I mean, it's a growing, yeah. you, you have to, yeah. it's a question of how, yeah. you know, you have to constantly keep finding it. Yeah. I don't think anyone has quite struck mm. that yet. Well, and of course, for me, it brought me full circle back to this whole, um, a white person in Kenya, yeah. the legacy of colonialism, mm -hmm. this kind of aid space is, typically a very white, yeah. global north driven space, yeah, the yeah. community rooted space yeah. is not. It <laughs> and so um, trying to figure out my place there, yeah, yeah. very conscious that I didn't feel at, fully at home in either. Yeah. Um, because in this kind of, I, I saw very sadly the injustice of the aid space mm -hmm. and I saw the the legacy of colonialism there. Mm. So the, the systems of colonialism existed to gain wealth and gain control. That was the the, the big goal. So did you, yeah. <laughs> and so I saw that mirrored mm -hmm, in the mm -hmm, aid space, mm -hmm. that actually, if you dug underneath all of the nice write-ups, yeah. that they wanted to gain control. control. And yeah. to be honest, gain wealth. Yes, Because yes. there's huge yeah. industry that exists around yeah, aid. It is, yeah. Um, and so there was this uncomfortable legacy of colonialism. I saw it mirrored in this space. But then on the community side, I thought, do I have a right to be there? <laughs> like, is it right for me as a white person who grew up in the UK to even be in that space? And kind of battling back and forth with where I belonged yeah. and, and what that meant for Seed of Hope um, uh, and what that meant for my ongoing career and, and, and just how to navigate that. And, and very sadly, what I saw was this kind of juxtaposition of on this side, with the aid, the legacy of colonialism, this kind of injustice and a sense of, unfortunately, people's dignity being compromised. Um, and then on this side, a pursuit of justice and a focus on dignity and, and this sense of um, development as freedom, which comes from, of course, Amartya Sen's writing around what development really means. And so how do we embrace the sense of like development being a pursuit of, of freedom, of giving people choice of opportunity and dignity and hope that is just, and therefore in and of itself begins to address the injustices we see around us. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I, I was That's, stuck somewhere trying to figure all that out. <laughs> I, and and uh, I'm curious to see if, 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 if there ever was an, an internal resolution, like an internal figuring out um, <laughs> at any point. Mm -hmm. And if you truly ever like were able to find yourself in, in, in that conversation and in that space. And I guess um, your story will, your story will keep unfolding to, to here, especially also in, um, because the context also has kept growing and kept changing. You know, there has been more fierce advocacy and fierce mm -hmm. advocates, Absolutely. you know, um, um, the voices of advocates like myself and others Absolutely. who are even more, more, uh, more, mm -hmm. more, 
more angry <laughs> uh, and <laughs> healthy who are, anger <laughs> yeah healthy anger and who are saying um let's decolonize development mm-hmm. let's um push people power up mm-hmm. and let's uh, finding yourself in a space like that when you're doing good mm-hmm. i think can be and, and when you're doing good in a place where there's also uh, less empathy can be can be tough i think it can be it's uncomfortable it's uncomfortable yeah. it can be yeah. very very uncomfortable especially when you're doing good and then you wear everything that you know you have said mm-hmm. um you know comes with that package mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. <laughs> I, i think it can be at times uh it takes empathy you know it, ta- it takes empathy is something that anyone mm-hmm. working in a field needs to embody yeah. you know any, anyone across the divide mm-hmm. a- across all across yeah. all the divide yeah. you know we need to just come wearing an empathy hat and say hey let's all chill first you know <laughs> let's all just wear an yeah. empathy hat but and- i also think that sense of discomfort mm. is not necessarily a bad thing mm. i think we perceive discomfort very negatively mm-hmm. But actually, I think if we look around us at the leaders who are really pushing for the right kind of change, mm-hmm. they're uncomfortable. Mm. And they're uncomfortable for a reason. Mm. So, so and yeah. they're making others uh, uncomfortable yeah. as well yeah. so at, 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 the, at the right times. Discomfort and, uh, can be a good nudge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs>